Bella Salon and Day Spa, located at 41 West Main Street in Northeast Pennsylvania, proudly supports Chautauqua Sunrise and its volunteers. More information at bellasalonanddayspa.net. Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Chautauqua Sunrise is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Hey, happy. Happy uh, Saturday, everybody. I'm Doc Hamels, and welcome to Chautauqua Sunrise. we got a really fun show uh, in store for you today, so please do stick around. But if you can't, you know, you can always watch us again and again and again on YouTube or at uh, 2 and 8 right on channel 1301 uh, on Spectrum. We'll, we'll be there all week long. Um, gosh, I hope you're having a great weekend already. It's a little cloudy. Yesterday was kind of a, a, a washout. It wasn't much fun to be around, but... Hey, it is fall, and that's what happens. But when uh, temperatures drop, look at the, look at the unbelievable foliage that's going on right now. If you haven't had a chance to drive around Chautauqua County, shame on you because it's gorgeous. Let the sun shine a little bit, and, you, and it's going to be great. On the way up here, uh, coming up Mayville Hill and into Mayville, the new trees they planted along the sidewalks are just gorgeous. Beautiful oranges and reds and all that sort of thing. So uh, I'm looking at myself on the monitor. I just realized, look at all the... Trick or treat stuff we, the guys set out for me here today. Uh, of course, everybody's getting ready for the fun uh, holiday of uh, Halloween that's coming up this week. And I just want to remind you always, 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 our, our little grandkids, our children, they always want to dress in black. And that's cool, but let's make sure they got some reflective material on them or you got flashlights. And please also be sure that you know what the hours for trick or treating are in your town. For instance, in Ripley, it's from 6 to 8. And I think that's pretty consistent in most towns and cities. But uh, stick with the kids, uh, make sure their candy's checked. Because every once in a while, you get somebody that's a knucklehead that wants to put something in there that's not good for them. And uh, I suggest uh, an alternative is go to your local fire halls or church groups or schools. They got a lot of fun things going on. And we're gonna talk about another event coming up that's Halloween uh, oriented in the next, in, later on in the show, that's gonna be really cool too. See, I'm giving you a promotion already, see that? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so also I wanna do a shout out to my daughter, uh, Steph. She's going to have her birthday tomorrow, so if you, some of you folks do watch the show and know her, so give her a shout out and tell her happy birthday. I can't tell you how old she is because she's now that era that you're not supposed to. But anyways, uh, and it always makes me look a whole lot older if I tell you how old she is. All right, I want to say also good afternoon to all our listeners on WRFA 107.9, low power to the people. Thanks for joining us here at Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. So glad you could uh, drop in and you're going to hear some, some voices and some, uh, some information that's uh, very familiar to you and also probably pretty relevant. 
And uh, also always remember that throughout the show, you can give us a call at 753-5225, 753-5225, and ask a question of myself, a comment to my guests or a question to them, or you can announce your, your clubs or organization's event, a fundraiser, whatever it is, wish somebody happy birthday, just like I did to my daughter, or anniversary, anything like that, because we're here to celebrate the good stuff in Chautauqua County, and that includes the people. All right, uh, let's see anything else I want to tell you. Hmm, I guess that's it for, oh, I know, I have a little note here right now. It's that time of the year that you got to be thinking about getting your flu shot. All right, now I, I had a new experience this week. Randy, you're not there yet, but you will be soon. Uh, supposedly after you get to a certain age over 65, I guess it is, they give you this like super duper shot for the flu. It's four times stronger than, yeah, four times stronger than the usual flu shot. So uh, check with your doctor, see if you're supposed to get that. All I know is I got that. And also this, this, this year, I feel like a pincushion, but they recommend it a pneumonia shot, which is a uh, one-time, once-in-your-lifetime shot, and then uh, then one that I hadn't really thought too much about, but they said, if you already got the shingles shot years ago, there's a new round of it that's supposed to be better, stronger, and comes in two, two uh, installations. Uh, it's like six months apart, and uh, so do check that out, because people I've talked to that have had the shingles wish they had gotten the shot, because it's very, very painful. So pneumonia shot, flu shot. Shingle shot, and then you're done for the year. Okay, so I got a few announcements, and then we have a special uh, guest that's going to be with me here shortly, and then my regular guest is going to be after that. So we got a lot to talk about today. All right, today, whoop, there goes my earpiece. Hang on, where'd you go? Um, today, over in Westfield, starting at six o'clock, so it's just starting to get dark. There's going to be something going on in the cemetery. It says here, enjoy a good spook while learning about history. Now, these are their words, not mine. Well, do we have a treat for you. The Patterson Library, Lakeshore Center for the Arts, the Chautauqua County Historical Society at the McClure Museum, Westfield Cemetery Association, the Village of Westfield, and the Westfield Barcelona Chamber of Commerce announced their first annual cemetery tours. They did some last night. I saw some pictures on Facebook, and they were having a good time. All right, this is the deal. You start out at the Westfield Cemetery, 6 o'clock, as I mentioned, through 10 o'clock. Parking will be available at Academy Street or, or Plank Road. There will be a registration and refreshment table at the maintenance building in the cemetery. All tours begin from the maintenance building. Horse-drawn carriages are $20 per person regardless of age, and each ride sits up to 10 persons. They'll also have walking tours, which are $15 per person ages 13 on up, and $5 per person for ages 12 on down. All tickets come with a complimentary LED lantern and refreshment. We will have hot cider, hot chocolate, mold wine. I still don't know what that means, mold wine, and other wines, generously donated by Johnson Estate Winery. We will also have a multitude of baked goods provided through library volunteer extraordinaire Sharon Goopel of, Sh of Sherman. All right, and so if you're interested and you want to know more, inform more information today only, because it's uh, uh, yesterday's done, today's up, uh, uh, give Tom Vitale a call at 326-2154, 326-2154, and that's for the uh, Westfield Cemetery Tour. I think that would be a bit spooky myself. All right, let's see here. My buddy uh, Ken Harley is getting right on to the new season this year with the Rolling Hills Radio. And I'm just going to give you a uh, synopsis here because we got a lot to talk about. But he's got a new show coming up October 28th at Shawbox, 212 West 2nd Street, Jamestown, New York. And he's going to have two uh, fine, fine uh, musicians. Uh, Sh Sean Rowe, who is, let me find a, he's a musician. He's got all kinds of albums. His uh, soundtracks have been on TV and in movies all over the place. And then there's Andy Cohen, who is... Uh, going to be on the piano, and he's been influenced by Dixieland and jazz, and he's been all over the country, and uh, they're going to be doing some uh, blues and folk and so forth. Now, I, I gave you the short version, because I've been talking about this for the last three or four weeks, but that's going to be this Monday. Now, <clears throat> the thing you know you should know about Shaw Bucks is you can get there about 5.30, have a little refreshment during their rolling happy hour. Food and drinks are available until 6.15. Then they shut everything down. You got to go get your seats. 
and, uh, and then they start to show at 6.30. Then they reopen the bar for about 10 minutes at intermission, and as I've said over and over again to me, the second best part of, the, of, of doing the Rolling Hills radio uh, experience is the meet and greet. The show up, so of course, is always the best, but the meet and greet, and I, I got to meet Tom Paxton in person and, and share stories with him about uh, me performing his music and stuff like that. So uh, if you're interested, there's some great um, shows throughout the year. This particular show is $15, which is hardly anything in today's market. Um, if you're interested in tickets, give them a call at 294-0416. Again, 294-0416. And that's the rolling ticket hotline with our friend Ken Hardley. Okay, a few other things coming up. Uh, we're going to announce this again, but we're going we're gonna to give it a quick shot right now. Let's go to slide 15 real quick, Jeff. There's going to be a Halloween fun fair at the Children's Safety Education Village, and we're going to talk about this more in depth. It's over on Route 394 in Asheville. It's going to be held on October 30th. 4 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., children up to 12, admissions $3, children 4 to 12, $2, and children 3 and under are free. Uh, huh, this is tick or treat, it's trick or treat, it does, it says tick. Uh, t uh, I don't know about that. Uh, trick or treat among the decorated buildings of the child size village. Costumes are encouraged. There's going to be all kinds of different things. And we're going to talk about that more here in a little bit when my guest comes on. Okay, then also we have something called the smoke alarm install program. We're going to talk more about that as well. But I just let you know that if you're interested in getting a smoke alarm installed, give them a call at 388-0170. And we're going to talk in depth about that because uh, that could save your life. Okay, this one just came in over the weekend from my buddy Steve Watterson. This is called Writing for Laurel. This is going to be held on Saturday, November 2nd from 8 a.m. to noon at the uh, Chautauqua Health and Fitness Center at uh, 1170 Central Avenue in Dunkirk. Fee is only $25, free entry with a $50 or more raised in pledges. So if you're interested, this has been going on for a number of years, but you can go to a website called laurel, L-A-U-R-E-L-run.com. Okay, laurel-run.com. And we'll talk more about this. No, it'll, it'll be next week. It's the, wow. It's almost November already. You know what that means? My wife looked at me last night with a nice little smile. She says, do you realize what today is? I go, no. She says, it's only two months to Christmas. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then finally, uh, the Chamber of Commerce for the county here wants me to tell you that there's a business after hours at the Southern Tier Brewing uh, on November 12th, and it's their chamber event called November Fest. This ever popular business after hours event is set from 5 to 6.30 on Tuesday, November 12th. Networking with your fellow chamber members and prospective members is always fun in this venue. The evening will feed your appetizers, a business card door prize drawing, and our cash bar from their terrific brewery selections on tap. All right, and if you're interested in going to that, 366-6200 or 484-1101. That's it for my community announcements. Now, patiently waiting since 8.30 this morning is a friend of mine, fellow musician, Steve Gustafson, who is going to tell us about something that he's been working on in the last little bit, because we know him in one way, but there's a whole other side of, of Steve that a lot of people don't know about. So I want to welcome to the show once again, Steve Gustafson. Good morning. Hi, Doc. Hi, Doc. How are you? Are we live on, on <laughs> yeah, we're, somewhere? Yeah, we're, we're streaming on Facebook, too. Good morning, everyone. All right. <laughs> so, Steve, uh, you made an announcement, which I won't tell you people what the announcement is I made a little comment and you said we need to chat so I contacted you and, and so you said you wanted to talk about a production that you are producing and in charge of at JCC so what's going on we are opening November 7th with West Side Story the classic retail of uh, Romeo and Juliet uh, and it is going to be my final JCC and Commodore's uh, production say it's not true it's true you've been there a long time right well 15 years well, that's a considerable amount of time to be in theater, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it doesn't seem that long, really. You so know, we do about two or three productions a year? Um, we have in the past done two productions of the year, a year. This year, uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit. In the spring, we uh, always in the past have done a play, and it happened to 
uh, coincide with all the wonderful high school musicals that go on in March. And so it was really, um, it was a challenge getting an audience in because there were so many good productions going on. The high schools do great stuff around right there. So um, we're going to switch it up and we're going to do two musicals in the spring, which is another reason why I'm going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the uh, at the end of January, the last weekend of January, first weekend of February, we're going to do Lacasia Fall, directed by Todd Wagner, mm -hmm. and then at the end of uh, April, last weekend of April, the first weekend of May, we're going to do Pump Boys and Dinettes, mm -hmm. uh, directed by Adam Owens. And, Adam, yeah, and that's going to be on the. Um, we're going to do that on the stage with, of the Charmin Theater. We call it the Black Box Theater where um, the audience members will be on the stage with the cast oh, and that's the actors cool. and stuff, and, yeah. we, and we offer beer and wine. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but <clears throat> my last production will be the, uh, the classic West Side Story. So when, when do you officially retire? Uh, my last day is uh, December 23rd. Wow. <laughs> You've been like uh, part of the institution there for quite a while. And uh, wow, how do you feel about all that? Um, I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah. I really love the people I work with. Sure. Um, I love working at JCC. It's a great place. There's, uh, there's so many smart people around, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I really need, uh, and talented people. You're smart to know that you need smart That's people. Right. That's right. the key there. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but it's, you know, I think I'm of age. I've been paying into Social Security for over 40 years, mm -hmm. and I thought, I better collect it while it's still there. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's, that was my mantra, is, is take it as soon as you can. Sure. Yeah, well, good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, let's talk about the show, okay? Uh, so last night I sat there and I was doing research for, for this segment. This show goes, was written in 57. Yeah, the year uh, I was born. You were born, yeah. and I was like five years old. So... Um, you said it's a Romeo and Juliet. So kind of, for those that are listening that maybe aren't familiar with it, some people that uh, are new viewers right now are listening on the radio, what's, what's the storyline? You said Romeo and Juliet. We won't give away the whole plot, but what, what basically is the setup here? Well, it's, it takes place in uh, New York City, mm -hmm. and there's some rival gangs, you know, youths trying to uh, find their way. And, the Jets uh, and the Sharks. Yep, the Jets and the Sharks. And, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, and they're immigrants, some, you know, they want to live in America. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, uh, it's a love story. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and there's a lot of dancing and, you know, there's a lot of male dancing. That's one of the reasons we decided to do it because we currently have a lot of really good male dancers. Excellent. Um, a lot of choreography I was watching scenes. I don't know if you're going to do the exact type thing, but it's, it's pretty complicated. Very stuff. similar. It's very complicated. And the mm -hmm. music is very complicated. Mm -hmm. Stephen Sondheim's stuff is very uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. And we've, uh, we actually we built a new pit for the orchestra. It's actually a loft up above the audio booth in the Charmin Theater. We knocked out the old uh, projection booth, which we re okay. never really used. So uh, <laughs> uh, the orchestra are quite afraid of that. And um, we're at, and we're going to uh, for the first time I think ever in this town our orchestra is going to be on in-ear monitors. Oh, um, so like what you use on stage? Yeah, what we use. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we thought we'd try it. I've been a lot of what I've been trying to do at JCC since I've been hired is really improve the uh, equipment. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. and um, you know digital boards and new lighting and. So we just installed new house lighting in the theater. It's going to be LED lighting so we can change the color of the room. Oh, um, that's you know, amazing. jets and sharks, <laughs> red and blue, or red and blue. Reason. So, so uh, now you know. After you see West Side Story when you're a kid or or, or whenever, you kind of forget the songs. And there are some like four or five outstanding songs that we probably hum all the time, and we forget they're even from West Side Story. And you, you hear them on uh, uh, commercials for automobiles. Yeah, yeah like uh, America. Yeah, and then there's Maria. Yeah. And there's um, oh, 
Officer Crumpke was Yeah, one. right, Officer Crumpke. And there's yeah. another famous one. Oh, Tonight. Yeah. I, I, you know, I was watching it, and I go, I, I didn't realize that was from that show. I was like, it was like from The Sound of Music or something like that. And I thought, wow, I, how could I, I not I, remember that? I got that? goosebumps just thinking of it. Yeah. Um, they're classic songs that anyone, certainly our age, yeah. uh, uh, grew up with, not even knowing they were from that. Okay, so um, what are the, the dates for the show and how much and all that stuff? Um, we open November 7th, which is a Thursday, and play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday that weekend. Uh, the the uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are 7.30 shows. Sundays are 2 o'clock. And then the following weekend would be the 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. Okay. Uh, so it's eight shows total. Wow. Uh, you can get you can buy your tickets online. Uh, the general audience tickets you can buy online at the JCC uh, box office website. Um, uh, there's we have discounts for seniors, uh, discounts for area students, and actually JCC students are they're only five dollar tickets for our students. And, and what are what are regular? It's twenty dollar uh, general admission. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's sixteen dollars for seniors. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to look at the poster. Uh, That's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and then a discount for um, uh, area students. So is it 2X, 3X, how many X? It's a 2X, and I can't really tell you how long it's going to be. We try to keep it, <laughs> we try to move it along and keep it short and sweet. Click, click, no, click. One, no one wants to sit in a the theater, you know, yeah. for three hours. It takes a know? long time, yeah. Um, so we really try to move it along. Um, okay. Well, Steve, thanks for dropping in, and congratulations on your soon have retirement. But you're not really retiring. You're just not going to do that job anymore because you're busier than ever with your music. Well, I, I think I think I'm going to start painting. Painting as in artistic, like well, no, uh, no trim and walls. And <laughs> And in, in I'm the not allowed months. to. I'm not allowed to do that in my house. I, I messed up one time. I haven't. You see these footprints across the rug, and I've been. I've been. I've been tortured since. They won't let me. Well, uh, one of my first jobs was a house painter because oh. I grew up across the street from a uh, a teacher. Okay. And they teachers painted, always paint. They painted in the summer, and so that's where I learned my trade. And it came in very handy when I uh, started playing in the band because we didn't make any money doing it, so I had to paint houses. <laughs> <laughs> got to have a backup to the band. Now it's the other way around. Please. You know, my dad used, to, my dad used to tell me um, uh, when the band started. You know, you got to have education to fall back on. And when, <laughs> and when my kids graduated from college, I said, "Hey, make sure you have a band to fall back on, because you may not find a job right away. You well, can always play music." Well, that's what I did when I retired. I, you know, I've been playing a bunch of stuff too. You know, this is the thing that ticked me off, Randy. I called up Hawaii and I said, do you need a good duo, you know, acoustic rock? They said, no, we're covered. We got these, this band from Jamestown, 10,000 Maniacs. They're coming to, to Hawaii. We're good. You get all the good gigs. <laughs> we're lucky that way. You're blessed and good for you. Yeah, so. it, it, that's travel is an occupational hazard of being oh, a yeah, uh, musician. I, I don't really want to do that, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we're, we're, we like to go to... Uh, places we've never been so That's when we cool. got Very offered cool. to go to Honolulu we said yeah we'll do be it. right there yeah. <laughs> okay Steve uh, best wishes in retirement and of course in your continued West success story. in six West Side Story and yeah. in your music yeah as well. thanks Doc. all right so thanks stay in touch with me. us all right MB's, absolutely all right all right we're gonna take a uh, quick break and we'll be right back so stay tuned uh, this is for you all bye-bye my name is Carly I'm 15 years old and I am a heart recipient I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I get my driver's license, of course I'm going to say yes to be an organ donor. I've been saved twice, so who says I can't save somebody else? This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Okay, and we're back, and one of my favorite all-time projects that I can say that I'm proud to have been involved with is the Children's Safety Education Village right down the road in Asheville, and I've got the executive director here, a friend of mine, Jessica Dayton, and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, so we had fun with Steve just now. We sure did. In the fascinating... Uh, career for that guy. Mm -hmm. So Jess, how did you get involved with the Safety Education Village, talking about careers and so forth? I mean, 
This sure. is, did you wake up one day and say, ah, I think I'd like to be the executive director of this place? <laughs> <laughs> well, I started in 2012 as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, and then for years, I, I kind of helped the village with all of their events and birthday parties and all sorts of things. Um, and, uh, and then in 2017, I came on as the associate director, um, officially full-time. Um, and then when Terry Kindberg decided to go on to bigger and better things, I took over for her in October of 2018. So a year. Yeah. Wow. It's been and a year I even, already. I even have my official shirt on here. This is my, I'm <laughs> backwards in the camera, Children's Safety Village. And my name is on, there's my, my, right. my bowling shirt, I call it. <laughs> and what you failed to mention is, is that you are, were an instrumental part of beginning the Safety Village. Yeah, I know. So we were you're very, very deserving very, of that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people may or may not know about the Safety Education Village. So. I'm gonna get this, the story started and you take it from wherever you want. I was uh, an administrator at Bosey's. I was a regional administrator. One day I look out the window. I see my boss, Dr. Skip Mino, and Joe Girassi, the sheriff at the time, walking past my window of my office. And I'm like, what are they doing here? I thought, I'm in trouble when you have the <laughs> sheriff and my boss. And they were looking the grounds over and they wanted to, 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 to come up with some project. Well, then finally they tell me what's going on and Joe's explaining this concept that you have of a miniature village for safety, and they're gonna put it out in the woods. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't. They were gonna put it way up behind the buildings, and I said to them, I got a better idea. I said, we got this big area that we just mow all the time that's doing nothing, and the buses can come right in, as they do. Mm -hmm. I, I was right on this one. You were. And so I actually picked the location of that. Oh, that's great. So, But it took a lot of years and a lot of planning to get that up and running, and I, I'm very proud to say that I was on the board for a number of years mm -hmm. and instrumental, but yep, that was right in front of my office. For, wow. and, it, and my son actually was driving the dozer that broke ground for wow. that. So we have a family connection. Huge history there. Yeah. So what is the Children's Safety Education Village for those that are new parents or grandparents that really don't know much about it? Well, we really tried to promote health and well-being for children in our county um, and surrounding areas. So that would be with uh, safety education. We want to keep our children safe. We want them to grow into healthy, happy adults. And in order to, the, to do that, they need to know the skills um, that will help them stay safe. So we talk about fire safety, we teach them traffic safety, bike safety. We have, a, we have nine different programs that we implement. Oh. Um, and when it first opened almost 10 years ago, um, this is our ninth year, and uh, 2020 will be our 10th year anniversary. So when we first opened, there were three programs, um, and that has expanded to nine. And it's, we really focus on all aspects of safety whether it be first aid, the fire, traffic, bike, um, pedestrian, parking lot safety, personal safety, things from pre-K all the way through adulthood that would be beneficial for people to know and um, learn and then practice so they know exactly what to do should that situation arise. That's fabulous. And um, how many safety villages are in this part of the world? The last we knew, there were about 17 in the entire um, United States. Wow, that's um, not very many. And some are only seasonal, you know, but uh, it, they originated in Canada, so there's a, a few more there. Um, and so the fact that we have one here, right in our own backyard, is is really huge. I think that that's something that um, people don't know a lot about, but um, in this in this <coughs> region, there is no other safety village. So. Where did the idea come from, do you know? Um, so the <coughs> Sertoma Club of Jamestown mm -hmm. and the Legions came together with two Joe Girassi. They had seen uh, the safety villages in Canada and they really wanted the sheriff at the time to take a look at it and they said they really felt we needed one here. Um, and, we, and we truly do. Chautauqua County has a very high rate of accidental injuries among mm -hmm. children. Um, and so everybody kind of went to Canada, looked at the different safety villages that there were there, and they worked for 15 years to get this uh, organization off the ground. Um, and I think a lot of times people um, misunderstand um, and think we're a part of the county or the BOCES educational system, right. and we're not. We sustain completely um, 
on her own through grants and donations and, and you fundraising. And you, you lease the land mm -hmm. right. at, at the Hughes Center. Right, which is perfect, as you said, because all the buses are coming through. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfect partnership. BOCES has been fabulous. Um, and so that it was really the, the ideal location for us to be. Great. Well... Uh, would, would you call my wife and tell her I, at least I got one thing right? <laughs> <laughs> you sure we, did. We have this ongoing joke, you know, she's like 43,000 points to my four. <laughs> <laughs> well, add I'm another never, one. I'm never <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so uh, you mentioned a lot of the, uh, the various types of, of programs you have. The one that I, I really like talking about, because I know you send us a lot of uh, information from time to time, and that's the, the babysitting course. Yes. I just think that's the coolest thing. You want to talk a little bit about sure, that? Sure, yeah. Are you going to offer that this year? Or? We do. We offer it um, monthly, uh, depending on the time of year. We try to do it on the days that the kids are already off of school. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a five-hour course that teaches basic child care, as well as certifies them in CPR. Um, and so the, the kids eat lunch there. Um, after they make it, learning kitchen safety, how to keep kids safe while they're babysitting and cooking, um, different recipes they can use. But they focus, we really focus on caring for children, um, even from behavior to first aid skills. Again, the CPR, the basic child care, changing a diaper, um, just to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for parents, that gives them a huge sense of security, knowing that they're leaving their oh my gosh, children yes. in capable hands. You, you, you <laughs> we, we were talking with Steve. I mean, I remember early on in, in my music career, you know, we had the kids and we'd have to go out to do a gig and you, you get a babysitter and you pray that this person doesn't do anything wrong or illegal right. or, or knows what to do in case of emergency because not everybody has common sense. Mm -hmm. and, but if we can teach them skills and things like that, that makes you feel a whole lot better. That's right. And so then they, they also leave with a babysitter go bag. So they have first aid kits. They have flashlights in case the power goes out. They oh, have wow. just this, this huge amount of you know, resources they can bring with them. So what you're saying is if they go to a, a babysitting job, they have a bag they grab and go. Yes. That's yep. what you mean by go bag? I do. So okay. we give it to them as, you know, since, since they were participating in the program, they get one as a part okay, of that. Idea. And then they keep it and they take it with them every time they babysit. Okay, and what's the cost of that? The cost is typically $75, um, but we actually have funding from the Chautauqua County Youth Bureau mm -hmm. um, to offer sponsorships. Wonderful. And uh, so if anybody's interested in that, they can give us a call at the Children's Safety Village and we can waive that fee. What's the phone number then? 338 0170. 338 0170. Got it. See how I did that twice, so That's I got right. it extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, when you talk about mm, the safety village, we're on TV right now, and we we don't we don't have a camera there. But what, how would you describe it for people that have never been there? Because we, we're on YouTube now; people watch us all around the world. Okay, That's so funny. how would you describe that? It's an experiential facility, so it's hands-on. Everything that we teach starts starts with a lesson, but then we have the capability of actually having them simulate that experience. So for the fire safety, we have a mock apartment with a kitchen and a bedroom, and the kitchen has smoke that comes from the ceiling, as well as a heated door, so kids can feel what a, a hot door to the touch feels like. You have in a hot case door. It, we do, it's interesting. Um, in case there's fire on the other side, doors heat oh, up. Sure. And so if they can feel that with the back their hand they know what that would feel like well the, you, i would think the immediate response that any person i don't care if it's a kid is going to get out that door without even thinking about that's it right. and, I, and i suppose as soon as you open that door there's fire on the other side you're you're toast that's right and then that's going to come right into that bedroom yep. so um you know in in talking about alternate ways out encouraging families to have safety ladders on second uh, stores or stories and higher um, and then we teach kids how to go out the safety ladder with um, a half a story um, drop that has the safety ladder out the window they can actually practice coming down that ladder what that feels like uh, safely in a safe environment so they go out a window to outside nope it's actually in this uh, it's in our mock apartment so we um, they'll come out a window it's still inside um, they come down the ladder and then they can go back upstairs to the classroom um, and so it's all in-house and um, it's it's a huge asset to our area all right, let me get this straight for people that are listening or watching right now. You're saying that they can crawl out a window that's inside the building that goes down a floor? Yes. And then they, so 
people are watching right now and say, well, God, that's got to be a little scary for a kindergartner or a first grade. So what do you do for those little guys? They're going down a, a rope ladder? What they kind of are. Way? Well, so our instructors are fabulous. Okay. Um, we have people at the top of the ladder, people at the bottom of the ladder. Teachers are there to be encouraging. Um, we tried to remove the fear from the situation, and we, we work under the theme that practice makes us better. Um, so if, if we uh, practice something, we are going to be less afraid of it in real life. I can well imagine a young child, and you say to that child, all right, I want you to go out this window and down this ladder, somebody's going to be there to help you, and they're going to freeze up on you. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to hide or something like that. They're, no, I'm not going down that ladder. On occasion, we have somebody that freezes, um, and we just, we're gentle. We we encourage them, and nine times out of ten, those kids all go down that ladder. And they feel good about they it. Feel and so, so proud. if on an unfortunate situation does occur, they've already experienced what that feels like. That's right. And so they, um, when they're coming down the ladder, we actually have an instructor right there mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, help their feet so they, they feel them. secure, they can guide, um, and, and then they actually go to the classroom and finish that up with a 911 call and what happens in a call, as well as, uh, you know, having our instructor dress up as a fireman so that they know that it's a person underneath all that gear and not to be afraid of them. Yeah, they look like Darth Vader. That's when right, they come and they walking. sound like it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of removes that fear from, from them as well um, so that kids aren't hiding mm -hmm. um, from them and would, would go towards them. So you said classroom. So this is like a real classroom, classroom? Mm -hmm. We have an educational facility that has two actual classrooms in it. All right, so it's a separate building mm -hmm. with two classrooms in it. All right. Yeah, and so, and the the mock apartments attached to one of those classrooms. Oh, all right. So then, how many kids can you accommodate in a day, or or, or, or per classroom? How's per that? Per classroom, we have up to thirty kids. So Schools. it could be like a. An elementary class yes. or, or two medium-sized elementary classes? Yep. We typically have um, classes, uh, two different classes going at the same time, so you could bring up to 60 students, wow. 30 in each room. The other room is um, working on traffic safety while the, the first group is on fire safety, and then they switch. So by the time they leave there, they have the fire safety as well as the traffic safety education. I'm imagining corralling cats. <laughs> Sometimes it's controlled <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Well, that sounds great. All right, so uh, getting back to the uh, the apartment side then, uh, so the kids, they walk in and you said there's an apartment, so there's a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for instance, we were, we were talking about my little puppy here, Brody. I mean, we have a, a gas uh, stove, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I realize I gotta be real careful with that guy because he's always trying to grab things and it would be so easy for him to knock a pan oh, off, sure. the, off the, the stove. Well, I think about a young child the same way or reaching over a flame or mm -hmm. anything like that. So I'm, I'm sure you, do you talk about those types of things? We do. When we, when we enter the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, we talk about kitchen safety, um, you know, making sure that the handles on the pots are going to be turned to the side, um, anything that could be flammable, um, identifying those objects, um, you making sure that they're, that they're safe with them, uh, candles, lighters, matches, all of those things we talk about as well as how to stay safe in a kitchen, um, especially for the younger kids. Okay, um, I just got a request for the phone number. Again, it's 338-0170. That's correct. Okay, I didn't make that up. I actually did get a request <laughs> in my earpiece. Okay, oh, there it is. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Uh, we'll pop that up for you. All right, so that's, you know, sort of like, I always hear this, oh, well, they didn't teach you that in school, or why didn't they teach you? Well, these are just things that should be taught, like, really young to begin with That's right. and, and we don't even think about it we don't you know until there's a problem we don't think about ahead of it so i think this is a what a gift to a family to to teach the kids some common sense things about safety in the kitchen or out in the playground or whatever so you said bike safety so what do you do for that for bike safety we teach students the abcs of bikes um, which are you know checking the air the brakes the chain of a bike before riding um, so we actually show them how to do it and then they practice how to do all of those things. We teach them proper helmet fitting um, and then they practice. Uh, so they get to, to do all of this and then 
their hand signals, um, right, left, um, stop, how to you know, use their arms to give the proper singles, signals, and then they go out into the village and we have uh, a, you know, a fleet of 30 bikes. In the village, um, you mean a village of We Lakewood? have a child-sized village at, uh, attached oh, right to our facility. Oh, right there at the facility, okay. We do, that has 26 miniature buildings oh, and wow. um, paved roads, sidewalks, do traffic lights. Stripe signs, stripes on the road? We do, that? crosswalks. So the real deal. We do, um, we wanna make sure that kids are experiencing all of these safety education techniques we're teaching them. Okay, I have a little aside a comment here. All of us here at the studio, well, at least the guys that are here today, we're all bike riders, mm -hmm. okay? And this makes me crazy. We all wear our helmets, we have our lights on our bikes, you know, we check our bikes, and yet I'll be riding down the road and I'll see people my age or, you know, or whatever, no helmets, uh, dark clothes on the wrong side of the road, you know, it's like, what are you people doing? Yeah. I mean, it's like, if you fall off that bike and you don't have a helmet, you're you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I've, I've talked to people that have gotten hit by cars and it's the helmet that, that saved them. So, I mean, come on, let's, uh, we teach this to our kids, let's, as adults, uh, model that as well. That's my little soapbox That's for today. That's okay, and sadly, you know, we ask the kids in our classes how many actually truthfully wear helmets, and, you know, most of them say they don't. Whether they don't have one, it doesn't fit, they only have one to share, um, so that can be an issue for kids in, in our county is not having a helmet. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that'd make a great birthday or Christmas present. That's right. Or just do it. Mm -hmm. and they, you know, well, I don't know what a helmet costs for a kid, 15 bucks? Yeah, something. it's not very much. You know, and for adults that say, oh, I'm not going to wear that dorky thing, there's some really cool looking helmets that you will look very stylish in. And my, my helmet, we got, I got all my stickers on there from various rides and uh -huh. things like that. So it, it's, it's just the right thing to do. And again, modeling. Uh, good safety for young children, and they they'll they're apt to wear their helmet if they see you wearing yours. That's right. So great. Uh, traffic safety. Let's talk about that when you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that's different than bike safety. It is. So right. um, for the the first and second graders, they actually get to learn the rules of the road. So when um, you know if they're riding. Um, in a vehicle with their mom and dad, mm -hmm. um, if they're going to be walking to school eventually, um, we're teaching them the traffic safety skills that they need. Um, so we start out in the classroom with that. We teach them the different signs so everybody knows what a stop sign is, a one-way sign is, a do not enter sign. Um, and we then take them, um, after we've taught them, out into this child-sized village that we have, and we have red electric cars that they actually drive and would drive in the village you practicing these kidding. skills. How cool would that be? I yeah. bet that's like the number one thing that all kids want to do. Oh my do. gosh, they love it. Yeah. yeah, they absolutely love it. And the teachers realize how important it is uh, because these kids do walk to school. They need to know how to stay safe, um, you know, that they have to be kind of defensive, um, you know, so that they're watching out for others and in, in what they're doing. How many cars do you have? Oh, gosh, we probably have 15 cars that we use. And they're all going on at the same time? How many, how many kids to the car? There's two to a car. So you got 30 kids zooming around your village in cars. We actually split them into two groups. So okay. that way there'd only be 15, okay. 14 or 15 at a time. And um, they're, they're, they're paired. So there's seven cars going at the same time, but seven small <laughs> electric cars for our instructors and the teachers are very, you know, interesting at, at times. Some no. are great at it, some haven't done it before. <laughs> are, is this great, gas cars or what? They are all electric. Also, yep. it's good for the environment and clean. Kids yeah. aren't going to get hurt. Or That's right. Like Okay, and you have curbs? And we all do, we have curbs, we have, So this is yeah. real life experience. It's a miniature city, really. Miniature city. You know, with a traffic light, railroad crossing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other half at that time of the, the students would actually get to ride our Safety Village Express and go around um, the village while the kids are, are riding in the cars, so. Very, very yeah. cool. So you said you have 26 buildings. Like whose buildings are they? I mean, different um, community members, businesses, organizations. They've all come together. They've um, built their own building there. Uh, they support the Children's Safety Village and our events, what we do. Um, and so we have a Walmart, a Chautauqua Opportunities. We have a bank, Lakeshore Savings Bank. We have a variety of different Westfield Mayville Rotary Pavilion. We, do. we have the. Pavilion. <laughs> 
pavilion <laughs> there. That's so great. Um, kids eat lunch at that so many times during the summer, spring and summer. So it's, it's really wonderful to have. Um, and so we have 26 different partners that have come together to do that with us um, and create this small village miniature city. Are you, are you going to be expanding into the suburbs? I mean, are you, are you doing an expansion or are you... We would love to expand. So what are, what are you looking for? Um, we would actually love to be able to provide um, water safety eventually. Um, and that's a long-term goal for us. Um, but we would also like to, to have um, a, a facility that would like maybe a strip mall facility that we could house our, our, our cars in, things like that. So we would love to um, provide gas safety, electrical safety. Those would all entail their own miniature building to do that mm -hmm. with the kids. So it's, it's, these are all things that we would hope to accomplish in our next 10 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <clears throat> can people tour the facility? Yes, yep, everybody can come in, tour. We do have a gate around our facility just um, to keep things safe. We Keep the kids uh, in. And that's right, we have to keep the kids <laughs> in. We do get, um, close the gates when we leave. Typically, somebody's always going to be there 8 to 4, sometimes on the weekends. Um, we do birthday parties there as well on the weekends. Um, birthday with, party at the Safety Village? Yes. Can they drive the cars? They can. Oh, my gosh. They can. Oh, cool that. They can use the bikes, they can use the cars, um, and we typically have scavenger hunts so they get to go play games inside the buildings and run through the village as well. So this is a multi-use, multi-purpose facility. It is. Yeah. And who pays for all this? We are sustained through grants, fundraising efforts. We ha have very small class fees um, with, with the schools, um, but most of what we do is through grants and fundraising. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, do most of the schools participate? We do have most schools. Um, we even have schools that come from Meadville, Pennsylvania, and so outside Wonderful. the region. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, you've got some events coming up, so how we about do. we talk about that? So, uh, Jeff, let's pop up the first poster, and uh, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about here with us. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have a Halloween festivity. Yep. There we so, go. Oh, that was, oh, he's going to do this one first. All right, we're going to do this one first then. All right, go for it. So our smoke alarm installation program is something that we're really proud of. Um, FEMA has given us funding to be able to help um, people in our community have working smoke alarms in their homes. And so what that means is they can people, anybody from the community can call us up. We, they can give us their, inf our, their information. We get in touch with one of our volunteer firemen. They make an appointment with this individual and then they would go to their home. They provide a free home safety inspection as well as the 10 year smoke alarms that, they, that are needed to make their house safe. Wait, 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 a 10 year smoke alarm, what does that mean? That means that it is um, installed with a battery that is a lithium battery that lasts 10 years. You never have to change the battery. For 10 years? For 10 years. It'll start to chirp at you after that 10 years, and you know, you have to replace it. Oh, you know, I got one of those uh, carbon monoxide ones, is, I think mm -hmm. it's got the 10 year thing, and it's the same thing, I yes. think. Yes, yep. All right. And that, and that just prevents user error um, from, you know, us not changing batteries as after the batteries die. <laughs> that's something that's quite common. Um, and then they would install those smoke alarms for you. And this is free of charge? It's free of charge with funding from FEMA. The, the FEMA, area. Federal Emergency Management? That's right. Something or yep. other. So, <laughs> uh, um, administration. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the idea. Wow. You guys are really connected. Yeah. So, do you get any um, visits from the federal government to say, wow, this is a outstanding program or state level folks? or We get state level folks coming to the village. We do get some funding from New York State Governor's Traffic Safety Committee. Mm -hmm. so they usually come down once or twice a year, see our program, and they absolutely love what we're doing. It's not something that is, you know, um, very common. So we're, we're a unique facility and um, and we do get both federal and state money for that. Now, do folks ever come in from other parts of wherever world and say, we want to build this, and do they model it after you, or do they take notes, or, or how's that? They actually do. We had a group. Um, we had a group from from Russia interested. Um, sometimes we get phone calls. I had a phone call last month from a man in Brazil that had a really? seen our website. He was an American living in Brazil, uh -huh. hoping to do something similar there. Um, we've had somebody from Bucharest, Romania, Romania or Ukraine. 
Bucharest. It's your um, story. <laughs> we can't, we can't, I can't disprove it. I, I can't debunk um, it. You know, that they're, I, I they're thought you were going to tell me from like Utah or California. You're telling me from, from Russia. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and, and. That's fabulous. You know, I think these are models that people want to use elsewhere. Never in the wildest minds of, of the guys and gals that started this program would ever have thought you would have said those words today. Mm -hmm. I, that's outstanding. That makes me just, oof. Because we good feelings all over. Yeah. So it's a model for the world. It is. It is. And it's, you know, teaching our children safety. It's something that everybody can relate to. Okay. And then you have a, another event coming up. We do. The, um, this next Wednesday, actually, we have our Halloween fun fair. There it is. There it is. <laughs> um, so it'll start at 4. The event runs till 8, but we're going to stop admissions at 730 just to make sure everybody can get through and still enjoy the day. Um, and we do have a small admission fee, uh, but we, we will have games as a part of that fee. We will have a bounce house, um, and the kids get to trick or treat in a safe environment among those 26 buildings. So when they leave, they're going to have participated in a trick or treating just like they would at home in our village. Um, and, and it'll be safe. You can trust the candy. Um, and it is a lot of fun. We do have Paw Patrol characters that will be there, Marshall and Chase. If anybody <laughs> wants to take their pictures with those, they are very popular with the kids. Um, and it's going to be a really fun night. Okay. And they can call the same phone number, right? They can. If they want. Or in just... Lots of parking there, there but, I, but I do know it can get pretty crowded It there, does right? get crowded, so, you know, parking can be sometimes an issue, um, it, but for the most part, they find it. Okay. We have a caller. Yes. Does I take a phone call? Sure. Okay. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Jack. Good ah, morning, Jessica. Linda. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. I've been to the Safety Village, and I want to mention that a few years ago, the Jamestown Lions Club sponsored a dinner there, and oh, wow. the Viva Lions and other area lions participated and it's quite it's quite an operation there it sure is isn't it it really is you have to see it to believe it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was it was i was really very happy that we had our meeting there so that we could all you know see what happens and it, it's such a great idea and today people i don't know as if they uh, emphasize how important safety is especially with children. Mm -hmm. I think we take it for granted. I would agree for that and with that. And I think yeah. that um, the kids don't always understand it if we tell them, but if they do it, they, they will retain it. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's really important. And of course, the younger they are, you know, the less likely they're even about to think about it because, of course, nothing can happen to you when you're young, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that uh, we do have openings with the Senior Employment Program and area businesses are hiring and there are other services with the Chautauqua County Office for the Aging. Uh, counseling for health insurance is one of them, HICAP, and it's free. Everything with the Office for the Aging is free. And the phone number is... There it is. 753 -4856. Oh, that's a different number than we're using. <laughs> we got seven five three four four seven one. Oh, you know what? I gave you the wrong number. That's my direct. <laughs> that's my direct line. Oh, that's my direct. Pretend line. we didn't hear that number. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why I say four four seven one is because they'll be able to talk to somebody. I'm out of the office a lot, mm. so it should be seven five three four four seven one. Okay, and uh, this is the time of year that we're all getting those. Maybe you're not. I bet Randy is and Jeff. Uh, they were all getting these things in the mail from all these insurance companies trying to get us to go over to their company and because it's the open window for some companies to change your insurance and then yes. it's over what December 7th or something like yes. that so is that what that's all about uh, yes that's what it's all about there are some exemptions if you're if you're a veteran and that sort of thing but right. it, it's good to take advantage of the time period allocated for the open window and the thing we talked about in a show I think when Mary Ann was on was that this is an opportunity to, if you are thinking about changing your insurance, to talk to some professionals that know the deal, that will steer you in the right direction so that you're not spending a lot of money you don't have to spend. Right, and it's an objective person. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're not about to, to sell uh, something for a particular company. It's an objective perspective, and they give you options. Awesome. Um, speaking of the, uh, the safety village here, do you ever have any of your folks placed there? No, we don't. No, I'll have to look into that. We would love it. 
Yeah, that would be great. Oh, I'm sure they would love it. And I have people that live in that area. Oh, that'd be wonderful. We're always looking for volunteers with classes. Sometimes we have RSVP volunteers, but we can always uh -huh. use more. I see. Our, our people are not volunteers. I do encourage them to volunteer, mm -hmm. but the program that I run is paid. They're, they're paid okay. wages. So I don't know if you have any positions there that would be like, you know, an employment segment. Sure. It's something that I'd love to touch base about. Okay. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Linda, I, is that like number 85 now? I, I'm her jobber. Every time, every time she calls in, I have a guest. Say, By the way. <laughs> that's a great, well, that's I, a great connection. I have to tell you, Doc is our job developer. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, that's what this show's all about is connecting people, right? Right. All right. right. So uh, you have a great weekend, Lynn, and thanks for calling. Thanks oh, for you calling. have a great weekend. Happy Halloween to everyone. Yes, Happy you Halloween. too. All right, and uh, make sure you touch bases with Jessica. All right. I will. All right, very Thank good. Thank you very much. You bet. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Um, <clears throat> okay, so kids are smoking less cigarettes, but they're vaping like crazy. Mm -hmm. Are you guys getting into that deal? We haven't yet. Um, there are some other agencies in the, the community that provide that, so we don't want to duplicate any services. Uh, but we definitely refer them to those those organizations that provide the education okay. um, for that. It is, it's becoming a, a large problem in our area, and Epidemic. we support any kind of prevention with that that we can. Okay, how about do you talk to the kids about medicines and pills? We and do. Stuff? So our you know our younger age groups, we talk about the difference between medicine and candy. Um, <laughs> we talk about poisons and things like that um, because a lot of those medicines look like candy to kids, and um, we know that kids, young kids especially, like to investigate things by eating them. You know, um, so it's really important for us starting at a pre-K level to talk about the dangers of medicine versus candy um, and making them aware of those things. You know, desensitizing kids so that they're they're not just being silly about pills with the opioid uh, epidemic that's we're faced with today. I think kids think that pills are just you know. A natural course mm -hmm. of life and that's great to know that you're teaching them there is a difference mm -hmm. in that you know they got to be careful and things like that because you know quite frankly I, you, you read the papers and that is, and this whole pill thing is just out of control it is it's becoming how more sad common. how many kids do you think have gone through the safety village I know I heard stats a few years ago and oh, it blew me away and yeah. do you generally know about how many yeah we usually see about four thousand a year but are at twenty seven twenty eight thousand at this point are you kidding yeah excuse so. me for the outburst I, <laughs> <laughs> last time it was like ten thousand uh -huh. so i guess uh, my my stance twenty eight thousand yes. kids we we have kids from all over the region that come for classes fabulous yeah so this is something that the community really invests in all right so for people <laughs> listening right now and they and <clears throat> they might be getting a flyer uh, at home from the school that says, uh, you know, we're sending your child to the Safety Education Village. Mm -hmm. Do they have to pay to go, or does the school pick up the tab, or is it yes and no, or sometimes? It depends on the school and the school's budget. Mm -hmm. um, the cost is $5 a child, and that just helps us um, pay to keep the lights on, yeah. essentially. Pretty Our minimal. instructors are paid through grants, um, and most of the time the schools will pay that fee. Sometimes they ask parents for assistance with that, and they might ask for 250 of the five, um, just like with other field trips. PTOs, PTAs, PTOs and the PTAs are very common, but a huge partner of ours um, would be a lot of the area fire departments. They pr need to provide education as a part of their organization every year, and so many of them support um, the village in sending kids there. I know the uh, Westfield Fire Department sponsors. Yes, um, they do. Good on them. Yeah, and DeWittville does. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we just had Lakewood Fire Department send the Southwestern third graders last excellent, week. Excellent, excellent. Um, so we get a lot of support from, from fire departments, which is wonderful. Jess, we're down to about a minute and 12 seconds here of the show. It's go, it always goes it fast. It goes fast. And we have so much to talk about. What have I missed? Anything you want to share with people? Sure. Um, I think the one thing I'd like to mention is that we do um, provide education on child safety seats. Um, and if there are new parents out there, even grandparents that transport their, their grandchildren, we have the ability to have people make an appointment. They can come up to the Safety Village and we can inspect their car seat to make sure it's installed properly. Um, three out of four car seats are not installed correctly and we want to make sure that, that our, our kids are safe from 
the time they're born through their their transition to adulthood. So if we can provide education, if we can provide um, a safety seat inspection um, for them free of charge, that's it's something that we would love to be able to help with. Wow. Okay, and how do they get a hold of you one more time? Sure. And let's get that poster up too, Jeff, if, for the Halloween party. So go ahead. So our phone number is 338-0170. Okay. And the Halloween fun fair is going to be? Wednesday, October 30th from 4 to 7.30 p.m. at the Children's Safety Village. Okay. As always, Jess, it's great to have you on the show, and I wish you good luck in the coming year. Thank you so much. And have, hopefully have good weather. I know Halloween can be really iffy. Yeah. <laughs> so, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. We had our friend uh, Steve Gustafson on talking about the West Side Story at JCC, so you should check that out. And Jessica Dayton, the Executive Director of the Children's Education Safety Village here just down the road just down at the road. 94 in Asheville <laughs> at the Hughes Educational Center has been our guest as well. So have a fabulous weekend. Have a safe Halloween. I guess we're going to see you in November, Randy. Maybe. Maybe. We'll be here. All right. So stay tuned and we'll see you all again next Saturday right here on Channel 1301 or WRFA 107.9. Low power to the people. I'm Doc Hamels. Have a great weekend. Bye now. <laughs> there we go. We covered oh, it again.